doesn't take long when you start to uh, develop a practice of mindfulness before you realize that we are virtually continually bombarded by thoughts. It's, they're like weather patterns in the mind. They're like, and there are sometimes like nice, clear, sunny days, but there are an awful lot of cloudy days, tumultuous days, rainy days, turbulent, stormy weather. And again, the challenge is how are we to be in relationship to all of that stuff that's driving our lives and, and our narrative of who I am. And, and so uh, when you get in touch with what awareness really is, then you're, the first thing you realize is that those thoughts are not me and they're not mine. They're just like weather patterns. They're impersonal weather patterns in the mind. So then you can observe them like a scientist. Like, what is the nature of this thought? Where does it come from? I mean, and they come like bullets, you know, fired out of a machine gun. They're very, very fast, so to speak. That's a, quite a militaristic image. But, you know, another way is bubbles coming off the bottom of a pot of boiling water, you know. If you've ever watched a pot of boiling water, uh, say uh, a glass pot, the, the bubbles tend to nucleate at the bottom. And then they go through the water and they go poof at the surface. So the thoughts are very similar, and that's where I use, and other uh, people often use this term, the, the thoughts self-liberate. You don't have to get rid of them. People misunderstand meditation as, oh, I just sweep all my thoughts away, and then I'm in this, like, nirvana. What you'll get by trying to sweep all your thoughts away is a headache at the most, because there's no way to sweep your thoughts away. They will get you every time. Uh, and then you can have millions of thoughts about mindfulness and meditation, and th those are just thoughts too. They're not meditating. But when you see that you're not your thoughts, then you can watch them in this kind of impersonal, uh, more sort of, if you will, observing way with kindness, with self-compassion, because a lot of them are heavily loaded with negative emotion. And uh, you can see that if you don't touch them, if you don't do anything with them, if you don't get caught in the, them, they self-liberate naturally in awareness. The awareness, it's like touching a soap bubble. You know, it's fun for kids and fun for adults too. Soap bubble and you touch it and it just goes poof. So I love that image. So like the thought is the soap bubble and the emotion too that's, you know, valencing the thought. And you don't need to do anything with it. Because your awareness is like, it's not even a finger, it's not corporeal. The awareness, just the embracing of it or the arising of it, like in the sky, it goes poof all by itself. And don't take my word for it. This is something that when you sit down and you begin to watch, you'll see this is not rocket science. You, can, it, you don't have to sit in a cave for 30 years to have that kind of experience. All you need to do is, in some sense, get out of your own way. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. That's really hard, but if you can have moments when you get out of your own way, then you'll see that a lot of the stuff that we get so caught up in, it's like, it's a mirage. And that doesn't mean that the thoughts aren't valuable. I mean, I think it was Einstein who said, you know, if you have one or two really good thoughts in a lifetime, you're ahead of the curve. Paraphrasing. Uh, so most of our thoughts are actually kind of mundane or imprisoning, but thinking is a very, very, I mean, it drives imagination, it drives creativity. So maybe we need to just create a bigger arena for our thoughts and watch how they not only self-liberate, but also inform each other in some sense. And then all of a sudden you see something that no one in the history of humanity has seen before. And you apprehend it because you're making, your, or your, something is being revealed to you. I won't say you're making the connection, but somehow a connection gets made, and that's called an insight. And you're going to have profound insights. I mean, science is, you know, sort of storied 
you know, wonderful stories of eureka moments, insight where, and it's usually not by driving, thinking, and banging your head against the wall. It's when you've thought as much as, you've gone as far as thought can take you. And then you rest in awareness. Maybe sometimes it's in sleep, or you wake up out of a sleep, and then, you know, 